And finally tonight, we had a rare chance to catch up with a man whose mind has been ranked with Einstein and Newton. Stephen Hawking was honored recently at the World Science Festival. His daily life is constricted by Lou Gehrig's disease, but his horizon is as vast as the universe he explores. 68-year-old Stephen Hawking, physicist, father, philosopher. Body so disabled by ALS he has the control of only one muscle in his right cheek, which twitches to become his voice, his daughter Lucy. Every single word comes from a movement of a cheek muscle, a very tiny specific muscular movement. That requires extreme dedication and commitment. Each twitch moves a cursor to a letter or number or pre-existing word. And because he can only type one to two words a minute, we told him what we wanted to ask beforehand. His words are then read by a computerized voice. He was 21 years old, a university student, when suddenly he started falling for no apparent reason. With the diagnosis ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, he said he felt he faced an execution. But then, racing against the clock, he turned to his work. He married twice, had three children, and outlived the prognosis by 43 years, treating every single day as a chance to ask a new question. If the universe gave you a giant gift tomorrow, an answer, what's the answer you'd most want? I want to know why the universe exists, why there is something rather than nothing. Hawking has said he believes in the creative majesty of scientific law not a personal god for humans. When you look at the vast size of the universe and how insignificant an accidental human life is in it, that seems most implausible. And it doesn't seem to make you sad ever that we are so insignificant in the universe. There is a fundamental difference between religion, which is based on authority, and science, which is based on observation and reason. Science will win because it works. Recently in a Discovery Channel series, he made news saying somewhere in the universe there must be other living things. He even dreamed of their possible shapes and sizes, but worn, they may not be so friendly. And then in 2007, he got to experience the wonder of flying in space himself in a zero-gravity airplane. Finally, his own body, no burden. Then, back to Earth and his three children, three grandchildren, who say he may have taught the world about black holes and gravity, but he taught them about daily courage and infinite kindness. And then what do you say to your children? What, what is the best fatherly advice that you give them? Here are the most important pieces of advice that I've passed on to my children. One, remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Two, never give up work. Work gives you meaning and purpose and life is empty without it. It's beautiful advice. Three, if you are lucky enough to find love, remember it is rare and don't throw it away. Lucky children to have you. It was tiring. Time for him to go. I think my parents' most important advice was comb your hair in the back and not just the front. <laughs> But that, again, that's another very useful piece of advice. <laughs> because if you think about it, if you spent all your time looking at, the looking at the stars and never looked at your feet, you would actually walk into some lampposts. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But you'd raise your sight. You would raise your sight. So I think that's what he's saying. Stephen Hawking once said, God not only plays dice with the world, but sometimes throws the dice where they can't be seen, reminding us it's the glory of being human to set out in search of the mystery. The remarkable Stephen